Hello everybody, happy Friday. It's time for Facebook Friday. We're a little bit early today. We have our last meet the teacher today, so I needed to bump it down a little bit in the morning. <sighs> so thank you for hopefully finding me. Hopefully you guys find me today. Hi Gina, there's Gina. Hi Gina. Um, it has been a crazy week. I feel like I say that all the time, but this week especially, I don't know about you guys, leading these couple weeks leading up to school starting is crazy. Hi, Patty. Hi, Alessandra. We have had hair appointments, dentist appointments, orthodontist appointments, pediatrician appointments, just crazy. Here, there, here, there, here, there. My daughter's tennis has started up again. Ugh. Anyways, so, hi guys. Thanks for joining me today. So a little caveat today, if I'm a little loopy, please just give me <laughs> some some grace. I'm trying, my kids go back Monday, so I'm hoping next week that my brain will reset and I will be able to think clearly again. Um, today we're doing the best bunny, and my bunny is in here, but he's hiding. I wanted to show you guys our new bunny and what um, kind of prompted me and inspired me to do a best bunny. Um, Facebook Friday. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes while we're waiting. Loopy is good, Gina says. I don't know, it depends on who you ask. Um, I'm gonna give it a few minutes. I'm gonna go over a few things with you guys. I have two new classes. Would you guys like to see the new classes? Um, in, I told my husband last night, I think I have had no longer than a 45 minute chunk of time to work in the last two weeks. I run, my daughter has a 4-H goat at her school that we have to go feed every morning. So um, I run over there, come back, work, then we run somewhere else and work, then run somewhere else and work. So I am honestly shocked that I was able to get two new classes designed along with the other hundreds of things that are going on personally and in the in my business. So I have two new classes to show you. These are, um, from the holiday catalog. And the holiday catalog, guys, does not go live September 1st. It's September 5th. We have to wait five extra days this year to start playing and ordering from the annual, or the holiday catalog. Um, I don't know why they um, did that this year, but that's how it is and that's how it's gonna go. So everything that you're seeing um, is going to be from this catalog. So that's why they're my September classes. I won't be able to order your stuff until September for these classes. Um, so it, September, I, I'm like, I want to jump right into Halloween and Thanksgiving and all that, but I know we're not ready there yet. Um, however, we do have to work a little bit ahead of time um, because for me to, um, I have to plan it and then you guys have to order it and I have to prep it and I have to get it to you in time um, for you to have enough time to prepare for Halloween. So my Halloween class is in September. I'll show you that one first. Here it is. And it is the Cauldron Bubble Stamp Set. How adorable is all of this? They're black line. Oh, you guys, the bunny came out. I'm gonna pick him up while he's out so you guys can see him. Well, there he goes. All right, maybe not. He's very fickle. Sometimes he, Sometimes he wants to snuggle and sometimes he's like, leave me alone. Okay, so back to Cauldron Bubble. It has coordinating framelits. I mean, hello, like a spider web, little witch's hat. And uh, I made six projects, okay? So six projects, um, super cute. And these are perfect Halloween treats. They're all 3D and they're so cute. So you're gonna need stamp and blends or a way to color them. The class includes the bundle and a bolt of the new black glitter ribbon that, I'm, that we're gonna use today actually. So, okay, I'm gonna grab him real quick so you guys can see him because some of you have been asking about him. He is a, here's my inspiration for today. He is a Harlequin and he's a Harlequin lop, but, but really he's just a mutt and his um, ears lay down, kind of. Sometimes we say he has antennas because they go down. So anyways, you guys, I promised I would show you our new little bunny today, um, and that's why I um, decided to do the, the um, best bunny um, bundle today for these projects. So like I said, um, his name is Ace, and his other name is Bunfrey. 
and his other name is Little Bun, and we bought him to be a companion to our other rabbit. So really, we bought a rabbit for a rabbit. But anyway, here he is. I caught him. I didn't know if I'd be able to catch him for you guys. I know, the feet are the best, right? His big feet. And my husband got the funniest video of him in slow motion last night um, doing... Um, bunnies do this weird thing. They run, and then they do this, like, spastic thing, and it's called a binky. <laughs> and he's crazy, and he does them all the time. So anyways, okay. So that was a distraction, but I wanted you guys to see our sweet little bunny. Back to the Halloween class. Here it is. It comes options with the bundle, without the bundle. Um, you can find it right now listed on my calendar page. And on today's PDF, there's a direct link for you to go over to the registration page. Um, and on today's post, there's a link at the bottom where you can link over to the information. So if you know you want this class, go ahead, hop over. Um, there are six projects. I don't have all the dates written down to tell you, but it's all over there on my blog. Okay, so class number one, and that, that'll be um, at the end of September. It'll go out at the end of September, so you'll get it the first week of October. The second class is Country Home. You guys, I love this set. If you are a fan of Fixer Upper, um, Joanna Gaines, this is all JoJo right here. Um, super popular in the home decor industry. And um, so I had to, I had to use it. It really was the first thing I started playing with. Now this class has three cards and two beautiful little 3D things. This one holds a gum pack. Now the other star of the show, look at this, is this amazing embossing folder. And this class is going to include the country home stamp set, but it's also going to include this 10 tile embossing folder. You have to have this for this class. And if you notice, I'm going to, um, in the class, show you how to ink that embossing folder and make different colors of embossed paper. Um, so, that's this class, Country Home and Tentile. You'll also get a bolt of this awesome new braided linen trim that we're gonna play with again today. So the, the link to that is also on today's Facebook Friday PDF as well as um, at the bottom of today's blog post. Hopefully that has gone live. I don't know if you guys have checked it yet. I think I scheduled it for the right time. All right, so those are my two new classes for September. Remember, um, it features holiday stuff, so it's in a catalog that um, boy, I'm getting connection issues, guys, and I apologize. Um, the kids are all off their um, devices. I don't know. <sighs> Anyways, I'm just going to continue. I'm sorry. Um, when I upload, the, um, the upload will be a clean HD version, so you can always rewatch it. Um, does the embossing folder fit in a cuddle bug? Um, Janny, I do not think so. It's a six by six, and I think it has to be a four by six to fit in the cuddle bug. Good question. It's a good reason to get a big shot. Um, so, and the other thing I want to tell you is the paper share. Here are all the holiday catalog papers. I'm offering a paper share only through September 5th. Um, I will order them on September 5th, and if you haven't signed up by then, it'll be too late. So the information, again, is on today's PDF, and there's a blog post on my blog. Oh, good, Susan, you're not seeing any internet issues. It, like, did this whole warning on there on the screen. kind of scared me. Something I've never seen before. I know somebody said it was blurry a few minutes ago. Okay. All right. Let's run through the announcements real quick. Hi, Anne-Marie. Thanks guys for joining me. Remember, if you shared Susan, look, he read my mind. If you share the video, you'll be entered for a prize next week. Um, run through the announcements real quick. Bonus days with your purchase in August. With every $50, you get a $5 coupon to spend in September on that new holiday catalog that ends this month. Um, the August tutorial bundle, uh, you get this free also from me if you spend $50. Um, I sent these out earlier in the week. I try to do it once a week. Um, but if you don't get yours, just let me know. If you spend $50 with me online, you get this for free, and it's 12 step-by-step -step tutorials. August is also the only month you can sub subscribe to it. If you just want the PDF, you can get a um, the six month for free. And uh, uh, once August is gone, you can't subscribe anymore. Okay, so there's that. Um, August is also the last time for the Share Your Seasons bundle. Color your seasons, share your seasons, color your, color your seasons. Um, and today we're using the framelits. 
Um, the framelits are really the star of this whole bundle of products. Yeah, the stamp set's awesome too. I will say that. And the watercolor pencils are awesome. But if I had to choose one, if I was going to be on a deserted island and I could only take one with me, it would definitely be these framelits. Um, I'm, we're going to use these these uh, really, really cool stitched framelits today. August, gone. You'll never see them again. They're never coming back. So make sure you order those if you haven't. Um, today... Uh, let's see, if you have not joined me for uh, Facebook Friday before, over on my blog right now is a PDF with all three projects that we're going to make. And on the last page, you'll see there are the links to those classes and the paper share. Um, and here's the hostess code, I, uh, the host code. I always give the um, projects that we're making today away for free with a, a minimum order suddenly I'm drawing a blank $30 minimum order um, by Monday night and this is what it looks like it comes ready to go all right in an envelope here's a past one here's another one I'm actually gonna give these past kits I always have an extra one I'm gonna give these I'm gonna raffle these off today not raffle but I'm gonna, these are gonna be prizes today for past um, Facebook Fridays all right so Jane is saying is the embossing folder in the class the same as the no, it is not the tuffeted embossing folder. It is called the 10 tile embossing folder and it looks like a, you know, a 10 ceiling. Um, so it's different. It's different. Um, okay. So PDF, go get that. That has all the information for today's projects and the measurements. And then let's do some prizes. Um, this is what they, um, no, no, this is what I'm giving away this week. I've got three of these. These are past make and take packets. I'm going to give three of these away to three people who share the video. Hi, Mom. Uh, Mom, are you supposed to be working? Hopefully, you're not showing this in your class. My mom's an art teacher, you guys. She's an artist. Um, is it the same size, Jane? Yes, it is. That 10 tile embossing folder is six by six. All right, so I'm going to give away three make and take packs. Next time, I'll pick randomly three people who shared. And last time, I said I would give away two trash cans, pop-up trash cans. So I went back today and randomly chose two winners. Oh, lunchtime mom, good, okay. Um, congratulations to Tiffany Almeida. She's in my downline, she shared the video. And Tiffany, I'm gonna send you the pop-up trash can. And Elaine Gettner, congratulations you guys. My mom really wanted one of these. She was not happy that I hadn't offered her one first. Sorry mom, I'll get you one. Okay, so those were the share prizes from last week. Um, now I also give a prize away on my blog. If you hop over there and you scroll down to the bottom of the Facebook Friday post, there's a little widget there that you enter your information in and it randomly picks people. And so I had two um, hostess sets, so Janet Dahl, I have your address, Janet. I'll be sending that to you. And Laurie Gleason. Laurie, I've sent you an email. I don't have your mailing address. And I'd like to send you the stamp set. Thank you for playing along with me. So two ways to win, sharing the video and going over to my blog and entering that widget. This week, I am giving away two paper pumpkins. I always have extra ones. You guys, the next month's paper pumpkin is Halloween and if you're like me and you love pumpkins and Halloween and October and fall this is the time to sign up for paper pumpkin um, go over to paperpumpkin.com you can subscribe and cancel anytime so if you just want the Halloween kit you can just subscribe for October October and then cancel it um, so don't let that slip away because I have a feeling these paper pumpkin kits are getting so popular that the refills are selling out before they even can release them. I mean, they're like crazy popular. So anyway, here's the, this month's paper pumpkin is what I'm giving away. And here's the little note about next month's. Um, and it is the Blissful Blooms. It comes with a stamp set and a ink spot and cards. Um, you're going to make cards with this month's kit. Okay. So two of those. So if you'll enter in over there, Crystal, you shared twice. Well, thank you. Then you get entered twice for sharing. Um, so go over and enter for that. All right. I've got a huge pile piled up over here. Let me make sure I've got everything out of the way. Um, if you need a holiday catalog, just let me know you guys, I've got plenty and I'd love to send you one. Um, Mariah, you signed up for the Halloween kit. Good. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I'm getting extra ones for Halloween. 
Um, remember, the make and takes come like this. And it, today, the three projects, if you like them, your order has to be in by midnight on Monday night using the hostess code that you'll see here in just a minute. And it's also on the PDF. Okay, my desk is cleared. That means it's time to stamp. So I am going to awkwardly move you guys over to the other stand real quickly. If I accidentally hang up on you, please just refresh the Facebook group and you will find me. Again, I'll just have to restart, but hopefully we will get this done in time that it doesn't look crazy. Now I have to turn the fan down because it shakes the camera. All right, so here's what we're doing today. Best Bunny and I am using some sneak peek products from the holiday catalog. Sorry, so thirsty. I get so thirsty. Now you guys know I get super irritated with myself when this is crooked and I'm watching the replay. So let's make it, let's make it straight, okay? All right, hold please. Um, so I am using the Best Bunny Suite today, the Best Bunny um, bundle. And I kind of struggled with planning projects because I want to just do pinks and cute, sweet, fun, little girl, baby projects. But I try, challenged myself to use some masculine colors. So I feel like these are more masculine today. Um, and I want to show you guys some of the holiday catalog stuff that's coming out. It is um, awesome. Of course, it's awesome. And it's holiday related. Um, you won't be able to order the holiday products that I'm using today until September 5th. But if you order before then, your make and take kit will include the papers that I'm using. I'm, I'm just really using the papers and ribbons from um, the holiday catalog. All right, so as long as you have the best bunny bundle at home, you'll be able to recreate these um, when I send you your make and take kit. Let me show you the paper that I'm using. This is, this is probably my favorite paper in the catalog. It's called Festive Farmhouse Designer Series Paper and it is Christmas, but we have, I'm showing you how you can use it for not Christmas. Look, there's a wood grain, a whole 12 by 12 sheet of wood grain and then a really good cherry cobbler stripe on the back. Then this one, which is probably I don't know, I say they're all my favorite. Um, a plaid, a lumberjack plaid, a dude plaid, right? That's super masculine. Um, then on the back, there's another old olive stripe. And then there's this, oh, maybe this one's my favorite. This wood plank, like a whitewash wood. We're using that today too. And then on the back, I love, um, I always love um, when it's like a like a book, like a sheet of paper, um, a, a sheet out of a book. So that's that, it's Christmas. The mistletoe, peace, love, joy, merry Christmas. So it's very Christmassy. And then here is another Christmas plaid and then a grid. I love grid paper. And that's cherry cobbler. And then here's the, the last one, the stars, gray granite stars and a Christmas stripe. Now you guys, when I'm, I'm watching this over here on the side and I see that it's blurry too, I'm so sorry. I don't know. I don't know how to fix that, but I know that when I, when I upload it, when I'm done, it will clear out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna start with this card. This is fun and it has some embossing on it. All right, now let me get my tray. I have pre-recorded these and you guys, I think it was pretty much, it's it's pretty impressive that I got them filmed because I am running on steam th these days, just trying to get everything finished for back to school. So it's I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not a perfect video, but it'll be there. If you wanna recreate this, it'll be over there. Um, on my YouTube channel, hopefully by the end of the day. All right, well, let's start stamping. Let's start by making this cute little bunny in the center. Now I'm gonna color his ears with, sorry, let me just get everything over here. I'm going to color his ears with Flirty Flamingo Light. So when we use a stamp and Blends, we need to use Memento, okay? Memento ink for stamp and Blends. So I'm just gonna stamp that, the little the little head right there. Oh, better not close that. And his face, which I did not pull out. So you have three choices of faces here. Open eyes, close eyes, and a wink. Um, I think we'll use just the open eyes since he's peeking out of the hat. His eyes are probably open. 
All right, so right there in the center, thankfully it's a photopolymer, we can see exactly where we're stamping. All right, now I'm gonna take my, let's move that out of the way, take my Flirty Flamingo Light. You can use um, Petal Pink Light also, which we're gonna use on the next card. But I like the big, bold pink on this one. All right, and even his little nose, you could give him some little pink cheeks if you wanted. And we're gonna open the punch. Here's what the punch looks like. You've got the head, the body, the hands, and the tail. And I'm gonna slide him in and just punch him out. Don't we love it when we have a punch that ma matches a stamp? I know, we're all like, oh yes. All right, now just a piece of basic gray. And I'm gonna uh, stamp the top hat in just the memento since it's what I have. And sadly, we have to fussy cut this one. I know, wah, wah, but that's okay. It's an easy one. And just keep your small scissors and turn your paper as you go. You know, guys, if you haven't embraced the fussy cutting yet, it's time. I think fussy cutting is pretty much a way of life for us now. We need to do it. We've got to get used to it. Just practice and stay on the outside of that black line and you've got it. All right, now we're gonna layer them. This is another sneak peek product right here. This is called galvanized paper and it is not as shiny as the silver foil, but it is shiny, you can see. So it's like your galvanized bucket. It is metal, but not that super shiny metal. I like it a lot. I'm gonna punch it with the starburst punch and we're gonna layer Oh, you know what, first, let's put that there. Let's put a glue dot right here on the back. I'm gonna put two right at the edge of the hat right there. And I'm gonna stick it down mm, right under his nose because he's peeking out. Now we've got that dimensional there and we probably need another one there. And put him down like that. All right, now let's do the sentiment surprise, which is perfect because he's um, popping out. And I'm doing this in Memento, and I'm just gonna do it on the edge of this Whisper White that I used earlier. And just take your trimmer, and well, it looks like I stamped it crooked. We may have to do that again. Let's see. Mm, no, I think we can make that work. All right, so I just trimmed it to the width of the word. And I'm gonna cut off a little bit on the left side. And I'm gonna cut a V. You could use the tailored tag punch or the triple banner punch to make your V. But when it's small like this, I like to just use my snips. All right, I'm gonna use a dimensional. And I'm gonna stick it out from behind the hat. Surprise! Okay, so let's set that aside and let's do the embossing. And I've got a basic black card base and we're gonna heat emboss. And when you heat emboss, you need to use this special little bag of powder called an embossing buddy. And it's going to hopefully remove all of the static electricity on that piece of cardstock, which will then hopefully Keep all that, that embossing powder where it needs to go instead of sticking to your paper in places you don't want it. Now you guys don't laugh at my Versamark pad. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> I, I think something happened to it in the class, but guess what, it still works just fine. It's supposed to be white. I don't know. But guess what, it works. Now if I was gonna do a clear powder on a white paper, I might have a problem, I'm not sure. Let's see what it looks like. No, it's clear. It got stained somehow. My Versamark pads always look like rough. I don't know about you guys, mine are rough. All right, so Versamark, you need to use Versamark when you're using embossing powder. Um, and then sprinkle this white embossing powder here. There we go, see how it sticks? That um, Versamark will hold on to that powder. It'll keep it stuck there. All right, let's close this and move it out of the way so we don't have a disaster. And then you're gonna get your heat tool. 
and you're just gonna heat it until it turns bright white. And I think I've told you guys a story. When I was a brand new stamper, I wanted to emboss, and I, this was before stamping up, way before stamping up, I had gone to the craft store, and I was gonna be cheap, and I was not gonna buy a heat tool. I was gonna use my hair dryer. I thought, that'll work, it'll be just fine. Nope, doesn't work. Hair dryer doesn't get hot enough. The heat tool gets pretty darn hot. You actually have to keep your fingers away from it because it'll burn you. And that's how it turns that powder into a shiny, slick surface. And as soon as you have all that done, you can see that it's a shiny, I don't wanna to touch it quite yet. It's probably, it takes just a few seconds. There we go. And then it's like slick and smooth. Fun, right? All right, so now, hello everybody who's joining, thank you. So now we're gonna add some DSP. This is that Christmas paper, Festive Farmhouse. This is two and a fourth by five and a half. And it's not gonna look Christmassy because we are not going to make it Christmassy. We're gonna make it on a masculine card. Let's see if I can get this straight. Well, let me open this up. I think I cut it not straight. So I noticed on my other one that it was kind of not straight. Sticking off in the end, we'll trim that. All right, and then here is the piece of, um, the other piece, see there's the stripes, the little gray granite stars. And we're gonna kind of overlap that over here on this side, whoops. Stick into my fingers. There we go. And I can tell that my pieces are a little bit long, so I'm just gonna trim those off. This is my super old paper chomper guillotine that I have used for a thousand years. All right, there we go. Now let's layer on our cute little bunny. Now my other bunny is white. Her name is Stella. And she was a, my kids raised bunnies for 4-H in the winter and she was the tiniest one and didn't make her weight. So my girls begged, it was our first year, I didn't, I didn't know any better. <laughs> begged and begged and begged and we kept her. And she has destroyed my house. <laughs> she is mostly outside, but she, um, when it's super hot in the summer, we bring them in. They're litter box trained, just in case you're wondering. You can litter box train a rabbit. So this looks like Stella, and she has gotten super sweet in her old age. And I saw somebody ask if my bunnies get along. It's still a work in progress. Um, this is the Twinkle Builder Punch, by the way. This is um, silver glimmer paper that we're, silver, Glimmer, yeah, glimmer paper that we're using. Um, in case you guys are wondering, bunnies, you can't just put two bunnies together. They will fight to the death. <laughs> and so we have been um, getting them used to each other. They like each other now. It's taken a, quite, a, quite a bit of time. Um, she is very interested in him and wants to be with him, but then her little, her little instincts, you know, kick in, and then she wants to chomp on him but they're good now. They're pretty much together most of the time. All right, so we've added a cute, few cute little twinkle, twinkle Builder glitter stars. And the last thing is that glitter ribbon I told you about that we're using in the Halloween class, basic black glitter ribbon. And this is, um, you'll find this on the Halloween pages. It's a fun ribbon and I think it goes perfectly with this little magic rabbit popping out of the hat and the stars. So a bow and a glue dot. And we'll add that right there. Well, I don't want it to cover that. Let's turn it a little bit. There we go. Now the last thing I wanna do, since this is a basic black card base, you won't be able to write inside of it. So you got to put a piece of Whisper White inside that's four, oh, that's got a little smudge on it, four by five and a fourth. And you could even stamp some of those stars in here or maybe the little bunny ears peeking out. That would be cute too. All right, there you go. First card, bunny, masculine, not baby, not pink, which is what my, my heart wanted it to be is pink. And I'll show you the next card that is pink. All right, I hope you guys like that. I think it's fun. Thanks, oh, you guys are sweet. I'm just now looking at your comments. Thanks. He's pretty cute, that bunny. 
And of course, when it has a matching punch, we love it. All right, now the next card we're gonna make is a fancy fold card. And I, before I show you that one, let me show you the original. Here's um, a team swap I did. Some of my team is on here. They might recognize this card. This was a swap card I did with our team, I think maybe June or July. Oh, you guys, thanks for all the likes and hearts. That's so sweet. Wow, you guys are awesome. Okay, so um, Crystal says, I love that you're not that you're doing non-pink cards with a set. I know, Crystal, it was like going against my like natural instinct to do pink. But I thought, you know what? It'll be fun. Let's show that it doesn't have to be pink and baby. Um, but this was the original um, card, hopping by to just say hi. Um, but I, again, was like, okay, let's do this in a masculine card, okay? Hi, Terry. Um, okay, so... What we're using is, let me get everything out, gray granite, and we're gonna do some die cutting. See how this opens up and allows that to kind of pop in? I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we've got a gray granite card base that is four and a fourth by 11. And remember on the, today on my blog is this PDF, and here are the score lines. You're gonna do two and a fourth and six and three fourths, okay? And then you fold up that one. Looks like my score is uneven. And then you fold down that one. And we're going to, I'm gonna do this differently than I did in the video. If you guys go watch the video on YouTube. I've done this card, a version of this card many times and I do it different every time. So we're gonna do it a little bit different. Um, this is that awesome wood plank Christmas paper. So just four by four. It's gonna go right here on the front. And then here are the stars. Now, what I did in the other video is I went ahead and put it, stuck it down and then went to run the framelit. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so we're gonna, it, it just doesn't, it has a hard time cutting through three layers of paper. Um, that's what I mean by that. So today we're gonna do it differently. I'm gonna show you how to do it without having to use your scissors to cut through that third layer, which is what I had to do. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna use a stitch circle, of course. Um, the reason I'm using the stitch circle is because that's the circle that we're putting on there like that. So I'm just leaving it out so we can use it. Now I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna make it about half the size of the circle down. You guys see that a little bit more than half. Um, just so that it'll be big enough. And if your paper wants to flip up and not hold that framelit in place, you can stick that down like that with a post-it, hold it down. All right, let's run it through. Two layers of cardstock, so let's go through a couple of times. And all big shots are different. Some are tight and some are not tight. See that cut out beautifully. Um, so you're gonna have to play around and see. You could, yes. You could do it like that. You could, but I like to make my circles just a tiny bit bigger. All right, now let's put this on here. Where is my adhesive? I'm gonna keep the big shot here because we're gonna use it again. So I'm gonna put this two and an eight by four piece of DSP here like that. And then I'm gonna put, put that circle back in there and cut that paper so that it matches the circle. Okay, let's see if we did it. Oh, we did, there. All right, see how that worked out? All right, so that's how you make the opening, the little circle part. And right here, let's see, we're gonna cover this up with a piece, a four by four piece of Whisper White, okay? It's gonna cover up most of that open circle. So, I'll go ahead and do that. You don't want it too high because then it'll show up above that, which we don't really want. Now let's take this circle and see where it needs to go. It needs to be right here. Make sure it opens. That's why I like to make it just a little bit bigger um, because when I, I've done it in the past where I made it a little bit too small and then it was hard to get through. So open it, it opens like that. Make sure it fits it's there in the bottom. I'm gonna hold it there and put some adhesive underneath it like that. All right, there we go. 
All right, so there's the basic card design like that. It opens up and folds over like that. All right, now let's make our cute little bunny. Now, when we did the elephant a few weeks ago, I told you guys about when you are when you're um, when you have a stamp that coordinates with a punch that has lots of body parts, um, you can kind of make a template here by punching ahead of time, and we're going to arrange those stamps so that we can stamp once and punch once. We don't have to stamp and then waste all this paper trying to get them to fit. So this is just a scrap of cardstock, and I have already punched out the holes, okay? So then I'm going to get the pieces that I need, and I'm going to lay them in there. And you can kind of slide them around to make, the, make sure that they fit. It's like fitting a little puzzle piece down in there. And then we're going to do his little body. And then this one. The little tail is a little bit tricky just because it's it has different... Um, round pieces. I mean, either way you get it in, it'll be fine. But, and then the tiny little paws are so cute. Now, if you guys saw the live I did with my friend Ange in um, Canada, we used the best bunny then too. So that's two more ideas for you. All right. So once I have them there, I'm going to take my clear block and just set it down and pick them up. Okay. Now let's get our stamp pad. Ink that up with memento because I'm going to color it with a blends and just stick it, stamp it right there. All right, while I'm here, let me get the carrot because we need the carrot too. We'll do him over here because we have to actually fussy cut him again. See, I told you guys, fussy cutting is a way of life. We just got to do it. All right, let's see how we did. Oh, like a glove. Look at that. Perfect. All right. Punch them all out and move my ink pad so that I don't have a disaster. Let's turn them over and add some color to them. Now I am using the Stampin' Blends like I mentioned. We're gonna use Petal Pink this time for the inside of his ears. Petal Pink is a lot lighter than Flirty Flamingo. So depending on, you know, what you like. And I'm also just lightly going to go around the outside of his belly or the inside, whichever, just kind of creates a shadow there. Um, I'm going to add a little pink to the inside of his paws. Oh, we need to stamp his face because then we got to give him some little cheeks. There we go, his cute little face. And I really need to give that time to dry before I color it with this light color. So let's stop and let's go ahead and put him together. The memento dries almost immediately, but I have found with this, the really light blends, you need to actually give it a little bit of time to, to dry even better because it'll kind of pick up that, that black. But once it's dry, it's fine. It's the, the light yellows. And this light pink, I have found, a, I have a problem with that. But just give it a minute to dry or use your um, heat tool that we just had. All right, now his, his little cotton tail, I'm just going to stick it coming out from the back just a little bit like that. Hello, so cute, so cute. Uh, let's color that carrot. Pumpkin pie, of course. And that's why I decided to add a little pumpkin pie strip to this card to just kind of bring in that color. And you don't really need to do a whole lot of shading, but you could kind of maybe go under each of those little lines with a darker pumpkin pie. And then Old Olive. Old Olive. And he probably doesn't necessarily need any of the darker, but let's do it. Let's add a little bit. There we go, cute. All right, time to fussy cut. Cut off all your excess cardstock and go around the outside. Now, I think you guys, we talked about this last week. So many of you, your schools have started already. I feel like we're the last school ever to start, but I know some of you start after Labor Day, so that's not true. 
feels like it. A lot of the schools here in San Antonio where I live have already started. We're all ready. You know, the anticipation starts to just become too much, especially my middle child starting middle school. It's a lot of, a lot of anticipation with that. All right, we've got our cute little carrot. And he's going to hold it. There he goes, so cute. All right, I think we can add a little bit of pink to his, his uh, cheeks there. Okay, little bun, you're ready. Now I have done, uh-oh, my lids came off. Hold on, we don't wanna leave our lens without the lid. Now, um, I've done a little bit of work ahead of time. So we've got the circle cut. We have these little uh, granny apple green um, grass, grasses, if you will. And these are from the lakeside framelits that came out, let's see, in the annual catalog. You'll probably recognize when I show you, has the bird. So these just little little pieces of grass I wanted to add. Okay, glue dots, where did you go? Am I looking at them? There they are. Um, I wanted to add just a little, I didn't wanna leave him by himself on this. So we're gonna do one there. And then we're gonna do one there. And then we're gonna put him right there. Now you want his ears, you gotta put him down low enough so that his ears do not hang off because then you'll have trouble opening up your card. So make sure when you place him on the circle that he's pretty much all the way to the bottom. And yes, dimensionals, of course. And don't put him too far down either. He's gotta fit within that circle. See, like that. Ah, so cute. Now, that piece of DSP right there that I was talking about, pumpkin pie DSP from the Bright Stack, that just kind of brings that orange from the carrot in there. I like the bold stripes pattern. That's the one my se I seem to gravitate to every time. All right, now, here's another sneak peek pro product, and this is awesome. This is a, it's called Braided Linen trim and it's like our linen um, it's probably softer than our linen thread and it's thicker a little bit thicker um, but it's a very like a natural um, you know natural trim and it will not bulk up your card too much so we're gonna make a, a bow and let's cut it off here. If you tie your bow before you cut it off, before you cut your piece off, you'll save, um, you won't waste any. You know, sometimes you cut off a piece and it's too long, you've, then you have to cut off several inches of it and you've wasted it. So I like to tie my ribbon while it's still attached. Okay, so there's the front. Adorable, he's so cute. Now let's open it up and do the inside and we'll be done. There are two, there's one little stamp on here that I think everybody might overlook and it's the little bounce, bounce, bounce. That's what I'm calling it. Bounce, bounce, like he's bouncing. And then I'm gonna take the pumpkin pie and stamp it at the end of the bounce. Hopping by to just say hi. How cute. I'm sorry, but the sentiments and the little cute sayings that Stampin' Up! comes up with are the best. All right, there we have it. A fun fold, masculine. I think you can still call it masculine, even though it has a bow. I think so. A masculine card using the best bunny. And here's the female version. All right, what do you guys think? Super cute, right? Love him. He's adorable. He's so cute. All right, one more, and it's our 3D project using those framelits that I told you that are almost gone. So let me clean up a tad bit and get a drink of water and we will finish up with a chocolate holder. Okay, now you guys always wanna know what's inside, what fits inside. So I went to my candy cabinet here in my office where I keep candy to design projects and stuff, and I pulled out several things. So first and foremost, you'll see these are Ghirardelli's, the old standby, they fit perfectly, so you can get four of those. These, if you wanna um, go a little lighter in your chocolate, are Skinny Cows. Um, the Skinny Cow Sweet 
raspberry, seductive raspberry. Um, it'll, those are pretty much the same size as the Ghirardelli's. And then this is the um, Krispy Kreme coffee thins that we went crazy about last fall. Remember when, when I made the coffee cup holders for these? Um, so those would go in there too. So four of any of those um, would fit just fine. And a nice little treat. You made my day. All right, so let's make the tag first. Now we're using the small bunny this time. He's tiny and he doesn't need a punch. We're not gonna cut him out. He, let me get everything out. He um, is just gonna be stamped on and punched out with a different punch. Let's see, I need to get organized, sorry guys. Here he is. And we're gonna color him in with the, um, I drew, drew a blank, crumb cake blend. So memento again. And I'm gonna stamp them over here on the left side. Remember, you have to use that memento if you're using the blends, not the stays on. The blends will work with our classic inks too, um, but if you want just a black line, you gotta use memento. Alicia's saying she didn't think this bundle would be for her, but I have totally changed my mind. Then my job here is done. You're so funny. I feel that way every time I see somebody make something with a set that I didn't think I need. And I'm like, oh great, now I need it. Gotta have it. Okay, so let's start with the light crumb cake. We're gonna go around the outside of his ears, his little head, and we're gonna color him like my Ace, Ace Bunfrey that I showed you guys at the beginning. He's brown and he's actually, I told you, called a Harlequin. And so he's got kind of crazy markings. And if you um, look up Harlequin, like if you were to look up photos of Harlequins, the the breed standard, I guess, or I don't know what you would call it. Um, I'm use, adding some dark around his belly and under his chin and under his ears. They sometimes have a, their face is cut in half with half dark, half light. And that's where the name comes from. And I've been, I'm not super up on bunny information, but I've been told that Harlequin is not a breed of rabbit. It is a, just a marking, you know, just a color. So who knows, the girl that I got him from was vague. <laughs> and she said his mom was a lop. And then I said, well, what was his dad? And she said, oh, oh, he's a lop too. So who knows what he is? We think he's cute and we love him and we don't care. All right, so there we go. We're gonna use this punch, and I can't remember the name of it. Everyday label. Hold on, before I punch, let me make sure. Everyday label, yep. Punch it out. I stamped the sentiment in cherry cobbler. I'm not sure if I said that or not. And then I've got a little gold heart. And you can just use whatever you have, whatever framelit. We've got lots of framelits with little hearts. This one is from the little bulldog set. Again, what's it called? Pretty Park. Pretty Park Framelits. And it actually has three of these, so you can cut out more than one at a time. I love when they do that. All right, so we're gonna put it to the side. There we go. Now, let me show you one of my favorite things from the new holiday catalog is another new embossing folder, and it's corrugated, you guys. Corrugated is like if you were to tear open a, a box, you know, like a, a brown shipping box. It's those ridges on the inside. And several, several years ago, we had corrugated paper, loved it, couldn't get enough of it, but it was discontinued. So when I saw that we had a corrugated embossing folder, I got very excited because now we can emboss any color, any size, any shape, whatever we want. Um, I have used this embossing folder. We used it at my team meeting this month, and I want to tell you something that we discovered. Um, first, when you're embossing, you don't need your magnetic platform. You need your standard platform that came with your Big Shot. Um, none of the little um, layers that came with it. If you have the old one, you're gonna open it up all the way. And because this is one of the thicker embossing folders, you're only gonna need one of these clear plates. Now what we found, and by the way, I was always told to put your embossing folder with the fold out, the hinge out. I was told this, so that's what I've always told you guys. And recently, I've been told that I was completely wrong. So I have no idea. I'm just gonna just go with what I have been doing for a long time. Um, and I get, a, I, have, I have heard official answers on that too, that 
are different. So who knows? So what I'm going to show you today about this one is that we found if we put the folder in this way with the stripes going in this way, it was too um, hard on the paper and it tore the paper. We did it several times, but we found if we put it through this way, it never tore the paper. And the reason is when you put it in this way, the Big Shot is putting pressure down on those lines the whole time it's going. So it's putting a lot of pressure. But if you put it this way, it's just putting pressure on one line at a time and then it's over real quick. So it doesn't have as much extended pressure on it as the other way like this. So when you put drawers in, whether you think that hinge goes out or in, whatever you do, just make sure the lines are going up and down. <laughs> okay, I want to tell you guys what the official answer is, but I'm not kidding. I've I've heard two different official answers, so I'm not going to give you any official answer on hinge in, hinge out, hinge up, hinge down. We don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. All right, so we'll open it up, and there we have it. Some corrugated. This is crumb cake that we're using. All right. Now, I when I made this, I just cut off a piece. I didn't measure it. So I think it's about, I don't know, that looks like, what, half an inch. And then about, I'm going to cut off at an angle like that and like that. And so I think that's about, let's measure it, about three and a half inches, okay? Now, I have cut out that lumberjack paper, super cute, with a two and fourth inch circle punch. And we're gonna layer these up first. I'm gonna put the corrugated paper on just with adhesive. And then, nope, let's go over a little bit further. We are going to stick this guy on with dimensionals. And I didn't wanna do it in the center because I felt like it didn't show enough of that paper. So I did it kind of offset like that. And then there's festive farmhouse twine, of course. Um, Carla, you're saying you use a folder and it came out in shreds. You spritzed it lightly in the water before sending it through and that helped a lot. I hear spritzing folders does help a lot. I've never done it. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the things that Stamping Up will tell you if you're having trouble with an embossing folder is to spritz the paper lightly with water. Um, all right, so this is cherry cobbler cotton twine, and it's um, a little bit different than our normal twine. It's kind of curly and soft. Um, and it's thicker than the regular twine. If you twist it, it's got some really cool fibers in it that I'm sure I will take apart and use at some point. But the, the Festive Farmhouse twine comes in Cherry Cobbler. Oh, what's that other color? Garden Green, it doesn't say, does it? And Vanilla, I believe. All right. My glue dots keep running away, you guys. Here they are. So let's just take a glue dot and put it right there. All right, so we've got that ready. Now let's make the box. I have already cut two of these. Here are the Stitch Season framelits, you guys, that'll be gone by the end of the month. You've gotta have them, they're so cute. I'm using the middle-sized one right here. When you cut these, there's stitching on the inside and then there's stitching on the outside so that the piece you've cut it out has stitching and you could use that like as a frame. All right, so I've cut those out already, soft suede. And we're gonna put them on the Simply Scored. And we're going to make sure it's straight up here at the top and just score it right at three inches. Do both of them like that. Then you're gonna need a piece of soft suede that is two and a fourth by six and a fourth. Now let me look at my notes. I think I know the measurements or the score lines, but I just wanna make sure. Um, six and a fourth by two and a fourth. We're gonna score the long side at two and four and a fourth and the short side at half an inch and one and three fourths of an inch. And this little box is gonna be hidden. You're not gonna really see it. Um, so don't worry about rough edges or whatever. We're gonna burnish it, but before we trim it, go ahead and take your tear and tape. That, we're gonna cut it after the tear and tape is on it. That way we only have to peel off the backing of the tear and tape one time. All right. Catherine says, this set was my second tier. I love how you tier your, your, your favorites, Catherine. That's really funny. It's cute. It is a cute set. All right, so I'm peeling off the back 
of the tear and tape. This is what you gotta use on your 3D project so they won't fall apart, tear and tape. Now I'm just gonna cut those little score lines right there. Okay, now I'm gonna fold it basically in a U shape. All right, so fold these up, and it doesn't matter if they're on the inside or the outside because they're gonna be completely covered. Fold that in. All right, see how it's a, like a U-shaped box? Now, I'm gonna set it like that so it doesn't stick to the paper. Take one of your little shapes that we um, cut out and scored and put some adhesive right there in the middle. And you're gonna set the box down right in the middle like that, okay? And then just fold up. And there, you see how this is taking shape? All right, now let's do the other one. Put some adhesive on that one. And this time you wanna make sure that the box is centered on this piece like it was the other piece. So if you were off-centered a little bit on the other one, make sure you're off-centered here too. You won't be able to tell that you're off-centered because it's covered, unless they're both not the same. So just kind of eyeball it and look there, make sure the sizes are the same and press that in, and there you go. Whoops, fold that up. How cute. Now you could put all kinds of things in here. Hershey's Kisses, nuggets, a little pack of trail mix. You know those cute little trail mixes that we get at Target, those are cute. All right, you made my day, and it has a bow, but I think it's still masculine. Do you guys think a bow is okay when you're doing a masculine project? What is your opinion? I can't, I have such a hard time not putting a bow. And we're putting that guy on with dimensionals. And it's done. Cute, cute, cute. I know. I love these framelits so, so much. And I'm sad to see them go. But you guys, because this is my job, I can't use them when they're not available anymore. Because um, then you would be frustrated with me because you wouldn't be able to get what I'm using. But you guys as customers can use these, um, you know, after they're retired. So I highly encourage you to grab these. Uh, let's see if I have that paper over here. Here's that. They're called the Stitched Color Your Seasons Bundle. And here they are. They're $33. And you might as well get the stamp set too because you save when you buy the bundle, save 10%. And then you have all these other little framelits that cut out all these other little things. I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. All right, so let's look at what we did today with our little bun. We call our bunnies bun bun. Call them bun, bun bun or bun. So let's get our little bun buns out. I don't know how that started. Stella, her name was Stella, but I couldn't, I couldn't call her anything but bun bun. Stella's her name when she's in trouble when she chews on my baseboards. Okay, guys, if you want me to send you a make and take kit, um, if you're gonna order the, the Best Bunny or you already have it, all you have to do is put in your order by Monday at midnight using this hostess code. That's how I'll know that you want these. If you don't use a hostess code, I will, I will think you don't want them. Unless your order is $150, I will automatically send these to you. Um, you don't use the hostess code when you hit $150 because then you get the stamp and rewards. Um, and I don't wanna take the stamp and rewards away from you. So definitely take advantage of that. And I will still send you these. I cut them Tuesday morning and get them out hopefully Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning. Um, this next week is crazy. Again, it's the first week of school, but it is also the week leading up to my retreat. I have a retreat on Saturday. So there will be no Facebook Friday next Friday, most likely. Probably 90% chance there's not going to be a Facebook Friday on next Friday. Um, I'm going to be super um, overwhelmed trying to get packed and ready for that retreat. So what I have planned on doing is a Facebook Live on September 5th when the new catalog goes live. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to, I'm in my mind, I'm still working out the details, but I would like to do a couple of things that day. Um, something in the morning, something in the afternoon, and maybe something in the evening. So you guys make sure you mark your calendar for September 5th. I'll let you know what I'm going to do ahead of time um, so that you can join me to celebrate the fun um, catalog. So don't look for me next Friday. I know, I'm sorry. Um, you know, you never know. Miracles do happen. I might be able to get it together, but 
I'm just going to say as of right now, there will be no Facebook Friday next Friday. Okay, you guys, have a great weekend. Let me know if you have questions. Make sure you go enter to um, win the prize over on my blog and share the video. And have a wonderful weekend. And I will talk to you guys later. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.